those who are strict believers in the Bible and they read it literally instead of symbolically, they would say, but you know, hell is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's true. And not, you know, with all the details created by the Catholic Church, but the concept is there. Now, Chris, once again, a teacher will always teach according to people's knowledge. So if I'm a kindergarten teacher, I would teach according to the children's ability to absorb the knowledge that I'm given. Meanwhile, I'm giving them the basis for very uh, hard concepts to understand. You know, when I teach someone one plus one, eventually I'm building their knowledge to teach them algebra. Eventually I'll be able to teach them physics and so forth w without teaching them, you know, basic math, the four functions, I cannot teach them the more advanced stuff. So the knowledge is always given according to the student ability to understand. So uh, back in the Bible days, uh, most of us, we were psychologically in our infancy. And as a result, the teachings were given to us according to our spiritual infancy and telling us these moral concepts that I'm trying to explain to you. You know, it, it wouldn't jive with these people. That they wouldn't follow just because these concepts were too complicated for them to understand. So they were given strong images for them to actually be scared of. Just the same way when we talk to a two or three year old, let's say you have a very expensive laptop in your office and you don't want your son to go there. You don't want kids to go there. You, you might give them the cookie monster explanation. You would say, listen, you know, don't go there. There is a cookie monster. And if you go in there, this cookie monster will do something to you. So we are able to curb the children behavior because the child is going through the mythical stage that they believe in these sort of fantasies, a cookie monster. But if I'm telling this to a, a 10 year old, you know, don't go in there because there is a cookie monster. He's going to laugh at my face because he's no longer going through that mythical stage. So mm -hmm. I have to give him an irrational explanation of why he can't do it. So the individuals uh, up to this day who are trying to help others to curb their behavior by giving them the explanation of heaven and hell have very little success. And why? Because they are giving them the concept of the cookie monster story. And um, people need to hear logical explanation. So the teachings of the Bible cannot and should not be interpreted literally, but rather symbolically. So there's another passage. We're going to talk about the one you discussed, but there's another passage in which uh, Nicodemus, uh, he was a teacher of his time. Uh, and he came to Jesus and, and he says, you know, we, we all believe that you have to be the Messiah because no one can do the things that you can. And then he asks Christ a, a question. So let me quote directly from the Bible for those who want to uh, know where we got this information from. And Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So here we have the concept that we cannot be born again if we're not born out of water. Traditionally, religious people have interpreted this passage that to be born again is actually to get baptized. This is what people did in the past. Uh, people were splashed with water. Some of them actually bathed in a nearby river in order to be considered a baptized. Uh, uh, even Christ himself was baptized by John in order to fulfill the prophecy. Uh, but to be born out of water, Chris, it's not to be baptized. You see, a man's sperm is made up of 60% of water. A woman's egg is roughly made up of 70% of water. And when that 
when they become together and and we have fertilization of the egg and that becomes the zygote the zygote is like a droplet of water as well and we in our grown up bodies we have approximately 69% we are made up of 69% of water so to be born out of out of water is actually to have a new body uh, so going back to the uh, passage from Paul Paul says that the spirit has one life it's true Paul is not lying. The spirit has one life. We, we just have one life, the spiritual life. Our physical existences are many. Two different things. You know, there is only one individual that is right now temporarily under uh, the persona of Chris. When that individual stops to being Chris, that individual is the same individual that have lived millennia before and it will be the same individual who will be who will live uh, millennia after actually you are immortal you do not die the spirit so the spirit has one life and we will never die we are immortals but our physical existences are many so there's nothing contradictory in paul's statement